and deliver on our promise to improve healthcare for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another ancillary serie under Qualimed Santa Rosa. For the month of August, we're actually celebrating a uh, long month. In line, in line of this, we have decided to conduct a lay fora on healthy lungs for everyone. Next slide, please. I am Dr. Aaron Villoso, and I will be your moderator for tonight's lecture in Lay Fora. Next slide, please. Before we start, let's have an opening prayer. Let's place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear God, we offer everything to you during this webinar. May we ask for your blessing and divine providence that the activity set for this undertaking be successful and effective. May we be living witnesses of your genuine love through the implementation of the knowledge acquired through this activity. Grant us your divine wisdom as we go about our daily task after this webinar. This we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Before we officially start this lay fora, to avoid distractions during the lecture, kindly follow the following instructions. Keep your mic on mute and turn off your video camera. If you have questions, send to us by typing in the chat box. We will answer your questions during the Q&A se session. And if you are watching via Facebook Live, kindly send your questions through the comment section of the video stream. Before we start, may I call on Dr. Oscar Fernandez, our Department Chair for Internal Medicine. Hi, sir. Good evening, good evening everybody. So for tonight's uh, lecture in the QualiMed Health Talks at Your Fingertips series, we will be talking about something that is close to all our hearts because we will be talking about the lungs okay so it has been uh, two and a half years since the pandemic and we are we we are still here because mainly we have our lungs our healthy lungs to thank for so for us to be able to continue with all our tasks, our esteemed speaker will be giving us tips on how to maintain our lungs healthy. Okay, so I will uh, return the floor to Dr. Ace to introduce our speaker and for our lecture series to start immediately. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For our esteemed speaker for tonight, he had his Doctor of Medicine at St. Louis University's School of Medicine at Baguio City and had his internal medicine training at the same institution. He is a fellow of the Philippine College of Physicians, Philippine College of Chess Physicians, and took his fellowship at Adult Pulmonary Medicine at the Lung Center of the Philippines. Without further ado, let's all welcome Dr. Augusto Sablan. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'll share my slide. Okay, so um, good evening. Thank you very much, Dr. Viloso and Dr. Uh, Fernandez for, for the uh, introduction and the welcome remarks po. So, gaya nga ng, uh, just like what Aaron said, 
for every, uh, for the month of August we are celebrating the Lang month and uh, for 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 our uh, for this lecture series we will be trying to we will be trying to discuss um, healthy lungs for everyone sorry Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so the objectives. Uh, this is also in 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 uh, uh, in uh, coordination with the Philippine College of Chest Physicians, and since the the main the main um, the main uh, objective of of this year's lung month is healthy lungs for all Filipinos. But for this lecture, I will be focusing on a special uh, age group of our uh, patients. These are our elderly patients. So uh, basically, this is going to be just a short discussion. Um, and we will be able to discuss what happens uh, to our lungs when we grow old. And eventually, we will discuss how to keep our lungs healthy and to emphasize early detection. Uh, of the different pulmonary problems. So, um, aging is characterized as a progressive impairment of uh, the tissue organ function resulting in increased um, vulner uh, vulnerability in environmental changes and a growing risk of uh, death. Yeah, excuse me lang, I'll just fix my, I'll just fix my screen. Ay, hindi ko makita yung slide ko eh. Okay. So, aging is characterized as a progressive impairment of tissue or organ function. This results in an increased vulnerability to environmental challenges and a growing risk of disease and death. And Aging is also the major risk factor for death from all age-related adult chronic diseases. And uh, on a global scale, as we could see, the number of adults over age 65 is projected to increase from 617 million to over 2 billion by 2050. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to discuss or uh, to have a short discussion on this topic. And uh, in the US alone, they noted that by 2034, for the first time in their history, uh, the old, older adults are projected to outnumber uh, the, chil the children in their country. So we, I, I wanted to focus on this particular age group in order to, to help us understand what is happening to our lungs when we grow older or when we age. And... Uh, as you can see, in the last few years, aging has emerged as the single greatest risk factor for chronic non-communicable diseases that would increase, uh, would, in would lead to an increase in your mortality and morbidity. And we have seen this in the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic underscores to elucidate the changes that occur with age in the human lung. And we know that although SARS-CoV-2 possess a mortality risk to young individuals, it is clear that the respiratory illness is far more fatal in older adults, 20-fold uh, higher mor mortality for adults more than 80 years old compared to those in their 50s. And we've seen this in our patients. So some facts about the lungs. The lungs is considered as the organ with the largest surface area. It, the maximum amount of air or the total lung capacity of our lungs is about 6 liters. So we, we reach the peak of our lung maturation and function when we reach 18 to 25 years old. And by the age of 35 years old, there's a gradual decline in the lung function. So, so as to, when we reach after 60, 35 to 65 years old, our FEB1 decreases by around 30 ml per year. For 65, ml on, or for 65 year old onwards, there's a decrease of around 20 ml per year. And uh, the lung is also one of the few organs that is constantly exposed to the outside environment and such the environmental impact on lung structure 
and function critically determines our lung health. Additional facts, um, in a single day, we inhale at least around 10,000 liters of air that goes in and out of our lungs for a single day. So that's, uh, that's quite an exposure to, to the environment. So uh, this figure, I know it's, it's more, of a, uh, more of theoretical, but there's an interplay of your genetic predisposition, epigenetic and, environment, and environmental factors that would drive the development of chronic lung diseases. So environmental challenges such as not only uh, focus on active or passive smoking, but also to your indoor occupational or home exposure, such as fumes from cooking, heating or toxins. Uh, here in our country, we still use wood. Some of the areas in our country would still use wood for as, as, uh, as a cooking material. And all of this would uh, lead to, um, to changes in our lungs. And uh, as the sim even even simple pollen, bacteria, or even viruses can cause um, changes in the uh, in our lungs. So these stressors are usually cleared or counteracted by our cells in our lungs, such as your macrophages, your neutrophils, or our dendritic cells, and these are cleared and repaired. But because of sustained uh, and overwhelming exposure, this to the environmental stressor, stressors and the genetic predisposition and epigenetics, this would most likely cause an imbalance between the physiology, physiological repair and renewal, and would eventually result into the development of your chronic lung diseases. And this is the common chronic lung diseases that are usually affected by age would be your COPD, lung cancer, and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Um, so just an inc these are incidence rates lang po. This is taken from uh, based on the U.S. since we don't have uh, a local registry pa in our country. The incidence of chronic lung diseases gradually increase gradually increase as we age. The red line would represent COPD. The black or the square line would represent lung cancer, and uh, the blue line would represent your idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And as you can see. Uh, by the age of 60, there's a gradual increase in your uh, incidence of this uh, chronic lung diseases. Just to emphasize, um, by the age of, at age 45, there is an increase of roughly 200 cases per 10,000 population. But by the age of 65, for uh, for 65 years old, there's around 1,200 cases uh, per, 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 per 10,000 population for your COPD. So that's, that's a, a drastic increase in your cases. For your lung cancer, there's also an increase in the incidence from uh, 65 to from 55 to 65 years old to 74 years old, and it starts to go down as as um, and it starts to go down by age 75. For your, in, your, your idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, it also, there's also a, an increase in the incidence as we grow older. Okay, so what are the different changes that happen uh, when we grow older? So we have the, our structural and functional changes. Anong nangyayari dun sa ating lungs when we grow older? So first, for the structural changes, there is narrowing of our intervertebral disc. This is known as kyphosis. Um, layman's term, di ko kung tama, but it's more of parang nagiging kuba yung pasyente. And this is more commonly seen among women. So in, in, in studies that they have done, they note that around, at around 55 to 60 years old, um, the 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 degree of kyphosis for 55 to 60 years old for women would be around a mean of 43 degrees. For 76 to 80, it's around 52 degrees. And this would lead into a decrease in your FEB1 and your vital capacity. Um, for the overall muscle function, there's also a decline by 2% annually. And this would lead, lead into reduction of your inspiratory and expiratory muscle strength. 
And as we grow older, there's also a decrease in the ability to clear mucus from the lungs, brought about by decreased cough strength and alteration in the body's ability to clear particles in the airways. Okay, so these are some of the cellular changes that occur in the, in the lungs. Um, the one on, the, on your right would be uh, your young lung and the one on the left would be your old. So as we, we know for a fact that the respiratory epithelium is very important because this would form a barrier and this would help us, uh, this would help, uh, it's like our first line of defense for, for inhaled pathogens, uh, particulates and foreign materials. So the upper airway is comp comp comprised of your basal cells, related cells, goblet cells, and these are very important because this would help prevent, um, uh, this would act as our first line of defense. As we, go, as we go deeper, so the airways would terminate into your, uh, into your in respiratory bronchioles, namely, namely your alveolar spaces, alveolar ducts, and alveolar sacs. And this is where your gas exchange occur. So in this part, we have two cells that are common, your, that are present, your alveolar type 1 cells and alveolar type 2 cells. Your, your alveolar type 1 cells, these, are, these comprise 95% of the surface area uh, in this area. And this would promote, and, the prom, and, this, and this has a prominent role in uh, gas exchange. And your type 2, as we all know, is uh, for the production of your uh, surfactant. So as we grow older, there is a decrease in your basal cells, uh, poor ciliary beat, and this would lead to decreased mu mucociliary clearance, both in your upper and in, in your lower airways, leading to a decrease in your cough. And for your alveolar spaces, there is decrease in the number of your alveolar type 1 cells, and there is predominance of your, of your alveolar type 2 cells. And this would lead into decreased elasticity, changes in the extracellular matrix and this would lead to um, uh, this would lead to more of uh, fibrosis later on so just a summary of the different cells that you've seen in the first in the uh, first slides um, as we can see the ability to, to repair and regenerate and remodel the respiratory system is dependent on the functional capacity of these cells and uh, under certain conditions, we know that the lungs is one of the organs that they have a very low turnover or kumbaga they, 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 uh, the lungs would usually uh, slow the yung, yung repair process. And uh, one of the hallmarks of this would be, one of the hallmarks of aging would be the depletion of these very important uh, stem cells. And this would lead to quantitative and qualitative changes that would lead to um, uh, poor, poor response to oxidative stress and uh, mitochondrial changes or dysfunction. And this would compromise the repair and regenerative capacity and would contribute to COPD and eventually pulmonary fibrosis later on. So just, just another representation. Um, we have here your autonomous factors and your non-autonomous factors. And very important here is for, for uh, when we grow older, there is also alteration in the cell-to-cell -cell communication and this would lead to immunosenescence or uh, as, we could, as we know commonly, usually the immune system of elderly would have a uh, poorer response. Uh, and this would explain why this would happen. Okay, so... Uh, additional pictures lang po. For the, so these are some of the changes that would happen when we grow older. And uh, those are the cellular changes. We have discussed the structural and the functional changes. Now we have the age-related physiologic changes in the, in the respiratory system. So first we have um, when we grow older, there is a decrease in the density of the bronchioles and an increase in their diameter. And we also lost 
There's also loss of elasticity and the lungs become more rigid. Uh, there's also loss of your alveolar surface area accompanied by enlargement of the alveolar space that would eventually lead to um, uh, coughing and shortness of breath later on. And we also note that there's a, uh, if we do spirometry, there's an increase in your functional residual capacity and a decrease in your FEV1 and FBC ratio. So COPD in the age lung, we know for a fact that cigarette smoking is the most important risk factor for COPD. But take note that 10 to 15 percent of smokers, 10 to 15 percent of smokers would develop COPD. So ibig sabihin, not all of the smokers would have COPD, but uh, 10 to 15 percent of them would eventually develop COPD. And this would know this would this is very important because this would mean that there are modifying genetic and epigenetic uh, factors that increases the risk for COPD, which is seen in some which is seen in this 10 to 15 percent of smokers. And uh, several mole molecular features of COPD would overlap with those that occur in aging, and this would act as sensitizers. For pulmonary fibrosis and aging, when we speak of fibrotic lung disease, this is a term that refers to a collection of conditions characterized by interstitial remodeling, destruction of tissue architecture, these are irreversible scarring and compromised lung function. Most common type would be your idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This is a chronic progressive fibrosing interstitial lung disease. And the prevalence, if you take note, for ages 18 to 34, there is around 4, four per 100,000. For 75 years older, there is 225, 227 per 100,000, so which is a 50-fold increase in the risk of having pulmonary fibrosis as we grow older. So how do we keep our lungs healthy? First and foremost, no smoking. It doesn't mean that it, not all smokers develop COPD that we, uh, we can smoke. It's not, it's not that. We need, to, we need to avoid smoking in order to promote um, a healthier lung and to avoid or to decrease the risk of having other diseases such as lung cancer. Second, we need to have uh, good exercise. Maintaining a high level of uh, physical activity in our, is a very important part of healthy aging, and this would minimize our morbidity later on. And physical inactivity is the primary cause of most chronic uh, diseases. And if we are able to maintain physical function as we grow older, this is vital to extend the time lived with good optimal health. We should also try to avoid indoor and outdoor pollution. Um, like, for example, when we cook, uh, avoid using your uh, wood or your charcoal. Uh, because the studies have shown uh, that these, these uh, agents would also increase the risk of COPD. Um, the problem is when we go out. And since yung, yung pollution sa atin, it's not really uh, good. So we can wear masks when we go out. Right now, we're, we, all of us, all, almost all of us are wearing masks, but we, we need to wear masks properly. And uh, proper diet, foods that are rich in your antioxidants would, would also help prevent uh, infection in your lungs. Vaccines would help and to keep our lungs healthy. And uh, regular checkups would also avoid uh, avoid having any unnecessary admissions later on. So when do you need to see your doctor? So when you have cough for at least more than two weeks, especially here in our country, when you have cough for more than two weeks, we should suspect for tuberculosis. So you need to see your doctor when you have cough. When you have unexplained shortness of breath, when you have blood on your sputum, unexplained weight loss, easy fatigability, if you have a family history of lung cancer, and if you snore loudly, you need to see your doctor. And if you are exposed to occupational hazards such as asbestos, silica, um, and other uh, chemicals, which is common in our area in Santa Rosa, since this is a, uh, a hub for 
uh, most of most of our factory workers, this is very important when we take note of their history, exposure to occupational hazards. And uh, what diagnostic tests can we do to help us in the diagnosis of these diseases? We can do the chest X-ray just to check uh, our lungs. We can also do spirometry to check the uh, our uh, lung capacities. And if we have findings in your chest X-ray, we can do your high-resolution chest CT scan to to confirm or to check and verify the findings on your chest X-ray. And we can also do your sleep studies to check if you have um, uh, sleep apnea. Okay, so in summary, we have discussed the changes that occur in the lungs as we age. We also discussed the common chron chronic lung diseases associated with aging, which is your COPD, uh, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, and lung cancer. We enumerated ways to make our lungs healthy and warning signs when to seek consult. So uh, with that, I would like to leave you with this uh, Hebrew saying. Uh, when we are young, we sacrifice all our health for wealth. And we, when we get old, we sacrifice every bit of our wealth for just one good day of health. With that, I would like to say thank you and uh, good evening. Thank you, sir, for the comprehensive lecture and discussion for lung health. Are there any questions from the floor? Thank you, sir. I'll start na lang po muna with the questions. So I have one question, sir. Since you've mentioned po kanina that lung aging po starts at the age of 35, is it prudent to have your pulmonary function test tested at this early? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Aaron, for that question. Um, actually, if you have risk factors for, for uh, like for example, if you have history of asthma, if you have uh, history of chronic exposure to, to cigarette smoke, although uh, if you look at the guidelines, they will say na 40 years old and above. But if you have history of you know, asthma, you can have your, your spirometry early. Um, but for, for just for a workup, I think it's not uh, advisable. We can, unless you have symptoms, of course, unless if you have symptoms of shortness of breath, prolonged coughing, then we can, we can do your, your spirometry. Okay, sir. Uh, another question po, sir. In your clinical practice po at the background of COVID pandemic, how did the pandemic change po yung overall lung health of those who got infected? Well, um, as, you, as, as we have seen, diba, we, we were part of the team that handled most of the cases there in Qualimid. And we have seen that this, this, uh, this has really affected them. Yung, yung, yung outcome uh, has affected most of our patients. And we have seen that... Um, most of our patients who have survived, and we have a lot of them, and they are very thankful for for the for the care that we have provided. Um, most of them would still have some occasional uh, shortness of breath, some coughing, but uh, through time, this have the, the, through through the efforts of yung sa pulmonary rehab natin, sa, they eventually nag nag uh, nag improved in later on. But uh, again, yung yas, with with, with uh, magiging iba talaga eh. nag, 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 nag change talaga siya yung, yung, yung how we, how we uh, did a lot of things and uh, as we could see before yung pulmonary rehab we, we, we don't even uh, give emphasis on it eh. di ba? but on, on this uh, uh, because of the pandemic we have really put a greater emphasis on this in order, in order to help our patients uh, improve their quality of life. Uh, Aaron, na commute ka ata. Sorry, sir. We have another question. Uh, would you recommend rehabilitation for COPD patients? And which patients will benefit mostly from pulmonary rehabilitation? Yeah, oh, that's a good question. Actually, hindi ko na ilagay dun sa slides. But yes, agree. Uh, pulmonary rehab is a basic is 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 one of the uh, core um, 
is an important uh, factor in in the management or important uh, option in the management of COPD. Um, as early, sa akin kasi as early as when when we see the patients na, na diagnosed na sila with COPD, uh, again, it's it's better that we can uh, refer them to pulmonary rehab immediately. But um, yung yung sa guidelines kasi would show na dun sa most mostly dun sa mga severe cases. But again, we can we can ako personally I refer patients with COPD for for pulmonary rehab. One one problem that we that they encounter is usually yung yung ang availability yung uh, yung yung distance from their from their house yung yung sa travel time nila ganun. But ideally, uh, pulmonary rehab should be part or should be included in the management of COPD. It's it's one of the if you would look at it based on the guidelines, your your pulmonary rehab is grade A recommendation siya. Uh, pillars po talaga sir ng management. Grade A recommendation siya in the management of COPD. Non-pharmacologic management. And we have seen this because pulmonary rehab would, inc- would improve the quality of life. Madi-decrease yung, yung shortness of breath, yung easy fatigability. And also, that, y- hindi lang yun eh. Psychologically, this would also improve their confidence. And so it's it's a it's a it's a cornerstone in the management of COPD, and not only COPD. Uh, we also have other obstructive lung diseases such as your bronchiectasis. Uh, this are this is also a uh, 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 cornerstone in their management. Okay, sir. It's a good thing po na meron tayong ano eh, pulmonary rehab packages po sa Kuala Med Santa Rosa na we can also offer for COPD patients and not limiting it sa mga post-COVID natin, sir. Yeah. Uh, we have a question po, Dr. Maravilla. Hi. Hi. Good evening, August. Thank you very hey, much ma'am. for your lecture. Yes, ma'am. Good evening uh, In po. celebration of the long month. Kasi I, I was able to attend the parang session on uh, arsenal po- poisoning uh, related to the recurrent eruptions of the Al volcano and uh, parang they were referring that uh, well with our ars- with arsenic the three most common cancers are bladder cancer lung cancer and skin cancer and that it can of course be uh, spread through the waters uh, to our the food that we eat uh, because uh, yung mga water na dinidilig sa mga vegetables natin, for example, if they have high, high levels. But it can also be uh, inhaled. So, But they were mapping actually the areas around Taal Lake uh, and as far as syempre Batanga City, Agoncillo, and were discussing on ways to address this. But I was just wondering kasi... Diba? Kasi ta- yung taal kasi dito sa atin nakaka- nakarating eh, diba? And if this is due to fumes, but there is no, well, as far as I know, there, is, there are no moves to actually uh, determine the arsenic level in our in our environment. Um, gano, do you have an idea? Kasi very, very high yung nakikita nilang prevalence around Taal Lake of complications from... Uh, uh, at, at, at arsenic level, not necessarily agad complications, but they are now seeing all, already clinical uh, manifestations of arsenic poisoning. That is what, what one of my question. And then my other question is that for cardio kasi, di ba, uh, may, pag nag-smoke yung pasyente, there was a study saying that if you uh, stop smoking, then you have to... Uh, to maintain or uh, quitting smoking in this certain number of years for cardio, I think it's, um, am I right? Is it, it's, it's uh, five between five years is for stroke and uh, 10 years yata is to reverse uh, all the, the cardiovascular effect of uh, smoke uh, of cigarette. Once you have stopped smoking from day one to, to 10 years, uh, is this true for 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 lung for lung function in case of smokers who still has not developed uh, permanent changes in the lungs? 
So that, that that's my two question about the arsenic poisoning and the reversal of uh, effect of smoking in patients who still do not have uh, lung complication from smoking. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you, ma'am, for the question. For the arsenic, ma'am, uh, ang ang for, from what I remember, it it it's a very potent quantalagista. It's a very potent carcinogen. But as to the to the yung levels po niya, I'm not. I'm not that familiar, but uh, I, I will try to look on it. <laughs> but uh, I, but I, again, that's a very good uh, question since we are exposed uh, within the area since yun yung sa taal. Um, but from what I remember, it's it's the the, the it would depend again on the sever the the duration and the uh, the time of exposure. With, with the carcinogen po would, would greatly have uh, an effect kung yung yung uh, yung sa risk mo for developing yung yung uh, lung cancer as for the cigarette smoking ma'am um yes uh, usually kwan kasi yun eh sa, most of the patients who are smokers um usually by ang 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 sinasabi ko sa kanila on when pag nag nagta try sila na mag-quit initially when you when you stop smoking yung first few weeks uh first few days pa lang you would experience coughing and then uh, after that after i think uh 5 days or a week there will be start of yung mag mag weight gain na yung pasyente since natitikman na niya uli yung food nalalasahan na niya yung food because cigarette smoking can 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 uh, masks yung yung lasa ng pagkain and uh, by the end of uh, some literature would say as early as parang nagstop ka na magsmoke to as early as a week or two weeks there's a gradual uh, recovery of your lung function but the longer na mag nagstop ka na magsmoke mas better yung yung uh, yung improvement sa lung function um yun yung yun yung po yung sa second question ninyo ma'am uh, as to the number of years um variable kasi siya eh. uh, but yun nga sa, sa literature would say as early as 2 weeks may improvement na po doon sa lung function um yung iba nakalagay doon as early as 6 months nag-increase yung lung function by this percentage po Okay, can I quest? Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Marco, go ahead. Uh, hi, Doc. This is Marco po from HR. Um, yes, curious lang po. Uh, does that mean to say that when you stop smoking, the nicotine from your lungs can be taken out also? I mean, because I remember I have a friend who had smoked um several years ago. Tapos when he had his dental cleaning, um, the dentist can still see the no, the nicotine from his tooth. So does this mean that sa lungs um nawawala siya after some time? Um sir initially yung yung nga yung sa nasabi ko kanina um for for yung nicotine level kasi um yung nicotine level once you stop smoking after 24 hours magde-drop na yung level niya eh, to zero. So yung yung sinasabi po ninyo baka yung mga deposits yung tar i think yun yung kwan eh yung parang black uh discoloration dun sa 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 teeth ng mga smokers and uh, but for your nicotine 24 hours after you stop smoking nagde-decrease na yung level mo agad and then after several days your carbon monoxide level in the blood would drop uh to level of someone who does not smoke and then um ayun but as to your question kung nawawala ba yung 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 uh, nicotine levels sa lungs yes sir nawawala yung nicotine levels po doon after you stop smoking but yung discoloration i think that's not because of nicotine i think that's because of the tar na component ng cigarette smoke i see i see thank you doc Apo. And then yung yung question ni Ma'am kanina yung nga yung sa as to yung sa smoking again yung yung sa variable lang doctor yung 
some of the literature would say that after 10 years of stopping cigarette smoke, uh, yung risk mo of having lung cancer would drop would drop by almost uh, would also drop after you stop smoking. Okay, sir. Thank you po. Uh, medyo madami sir questions about smoking. So, a follow-up question po for smoking is, what help is available po to smokers who want to stop at the hospital or elsewhere if known po? Okay. So, that's a very good question actually. Um, okay. So, smoking cessation. Idea, yung, yung first, sasagutin ko yung help. Di ba may tanong siya kung saan pwede? Any any pulmonologist would would can help uh, a patient to stop smoking. Uh, kung gusto niyo naman ng meron din tayong DOH quit line. Diba sa lung center yun eh. And ideally we, when we do smoking cessation um madami kasing techniques in doing yung your smoking cessation. But uh, studies have shown na very important pa rin kasi unang-una is yung willingness ng patient to stop smoking. Uh, yun ang usual na sinasabi ko dun sa mga pasyente. Kasi if, if, you, if the patient is not yet ready to stop smoking, uh, mukhang mag-fail yan. So dapat, dapat talaga ready na siya when, before siya. I-assess kasi namin yun eh. Uh, kung meron na yung readiness niya for for uh, smoking cessation. Um, and after that, i-guide namin sila on how we can do uh, yung, yung, yung uh, how can we, we, we go about with the smoking cessation. So meron yung tinatawag nilang five A's. Five A's in smoking cessation. First is you ask. Ask the patient, are you ready to stop or are you ready to quit? Why are you going to quit? Ano ba yung reason mo for quitting? Um, ito ba ay bukal sa kalooban mo o napag-utusan ka o dahil tinakot ka or ganon. And then you need to advise. Advise them on the benefits of uh, yung benefits of quitting. Sabihin sa kanila, dun sa mga pasyente kung ano yung makukuha nila when you stop smoking uh, like yun yung mga same thing um, mag, mag uh, babalik yung panlasa gaganda yung pag mababawasan yung hingal and then after that the next a is to assess we need to assess if the patient is really is, is really ready to uh, do yung yung smoking cessation and then after we assess we need to assist them uh, in their journey. Kasi it's going to be a very difficult journey, especially for, for uh, most of the smokers. Kasi ang daming reasons niyan eh, uh, na, na pwedeng bumalik. Ang actually pinakamahirap dun sa smoking cessation is maintaining yung pagtigil mo ng sigarilyo. Kasi madaming urges yan na nakikita yung mga pasyente. And lastly, arrange. Um, you need to arrange for uh, yung mga kailangan nilang gawin at, at yung mga kailangan din na gawin ng mga kasama nila sa bahay para matulungan natin yung smoker na mag, mag uh, quit talaga nung, nung uh, paninigarilyo. Yun. Yun yung uh, sa, sa smoking cessation. And okay. yeah, there are also some we can also use some some uh, treatment mga, may mga treatment modalities din tayo yung iba nagbibigay tayo ng mga medications to help them especially for for patients who are really having difficulty quitting on their own we can also provide additional uh, medications for them okay sir on that note po we have another question are there still local pills po available for smoking cessation since very nectin and bupropion is no longer available? Oh, um, meron yung isa, ano to, Nico, ano na yun? Nico, ano na, nalimutan ko yung pangalan niya. Um, yeah, there is one. Nalimutan ko lang yung, yung name. 
uh, nasa local market siya. Eh. Nakita ko nag nagko-cover yun before the pandemic but I, I can't remember the name but I think there's one na available. Yeah. Ihahanapin ko. Sige po. We have another question po sir. Uh, my X-ray results shows uh, reticular opacities in bilateral apices more on the left. Is this shows TB disease? Okay. Um, so, yung, usually kasi is when, when we speak of tuberculosis, um, the, the findings would usually occur in the upper lung fields. Eh. Um, but this is, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you have findings na yung sinabi mo would mean you have TB. Okay, so meron pang mga ibang cases na pwedeng maging, maging cause nun. But since we are endemic for tuberculosis, we will suspect for TB. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that if you have those findings on your X-ray that you have active TB. Okay, so the X-rays would just help us to, to, uh, kumbaga parang more of a screening, and then we need to do additional workups like your sputum gene expert to determine if you have active TB or not. Okay, sir. Thank you po. We have another question po. Uh, what is the general approach to treating COPD and how long does it generally need to continue for? So, for your COPD, una-una, syempre, you need to review your, your, your history and PE and it's very important that you take note of the patient's smoking history. Uh, you compute for the smoking history of the, uh, for the number of back years. And then you also... Uh, take note of the other environmental exposures and so once once you have the risks usually 40 if you are 40 years old you've been a smoker for at least 10 pack years and you have your symptoms you need to undergo spirometry diba? so we need to to check your lung function and then we do your spirometry and once the spirometry confirms the presence of the obstruction then you need, we need to start you on the medications for COPD. And remember, COPD is irreversible, di ba? So hindi na siya reverse unlike asthma. So this would only mean that if you, ha if you have COPD, um, you need to continue your medications in order to uh, prevent having exacerba exacerbation and, and also to prevent uh, worsening of your lung function. So pag na-diagnose ka ng COPD, yung treatment niya would be continuous. Hindi siya parang tuberculosis na after six months, eh, okay na. It's, it's not like that. Okay, sir. Uh, I would like to echo lang po yung sagot po ni Dr. Carpio dun sa inquiry if there's a pulmonary rehab po catering to children. So yes, we do have a pulmonary rehab po catering to children. So yun nga po, as mentioned naman po ni Dr. Iris Carpio po, so we do have this kind of service and we'll just ask the parent to accompany po yung ano, mga pediatric patients when they do the pulmonary rehab exercises. Are there any more questions po from the floor? I think there's none. So thank you po, Dr. Sablan, for a very ano, po, comprehensive, interactive lecture po. May I call on Ms. Diana to present first the certificates. Hi, good evening, everyone. So I'm here to present the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Augusto S. Sablan for his expertise and valuable role as a speaker during the webinar entitled Healthy Lungs for Everyone, given this 24th day of August 2022 via Zoom virtual event. Signed by Attorney Nirmala Barbara Espangorja, Chief Operating Officer of Palamid Hospital Santa Rosa, and our medical director, Dr. Lilibet M. Maravilla. Also, we would like to present the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Aaron Christian Earl Villoso 
for his expertise and valuable role as moderator during the webinar entitled Healthy Lungs for Everyone, given this 24th day of August 2022 via Zoom virtual event. Signed by Attorney Nirmala Barbara Espencorja, Chief Operating Officer of Palomid Hospital Santa Rosa, and Dr. Lilibet M. Maravilla, our Medical Director. Thank you, Diana. Before we end, uh, we would like to promote lang po yung mga services sa Qualimed Santa Rosa. So first, we are actually offering po yung lung cancer screening package po natin. So you can call po yung ating IOH department to avail this kind of service. And we also have the pulmonary function test. You may call at our uh, pulmonary department as indicated po at the marketing material. And for our dear COPD patients and post-COVID patients, we also offer post-COVID uh, pulmonary rehab packages po sa Qualimed Santa Rosa. Uh, before we end po, uh, before we officially end this uh, webinar series po, may we call on our medical director, Dr. Lilibet Maravilla. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, August for that very uh, wonderful lecture. Kasi yung lecture ni August is um, um, ano siya? Uh, comprehensive kasi nag-start si August sa uh, what would be the normal course uh, of our lungs as we age. So parang kotse na bago. Hanggang patanda ng patanda yung kotse na marami na siyempre pumapalya. This is the normal course. But on top of that, uh, August re really emphasized what are the things that will make our lungs age earlier or will uh, cause a disease in the lungs that we can prevent. Uh, there are a number of environmental diseases and also a number of acquired diseases that we re usually would uh, achieve or we would have because of the things that we can have control of. Control of. So, napakaganda yung discussion on smoking because this is the number one uh, killer, not just for, for the lungs, but also for the rest of the uh, cardiovascular system and cerebrovascular system, lahat, lahat na lang. Uh, smoking can put you at risk in general two to three times high. So, uh, this is really a, a, a good month to celebrate uh, uh, a long, long uh, health and a very good uh, lecture to cover for what is natural course and what is uh, what are the things that can hasten our, our lung death. So very, very nicely delivered. So thank you very much, uh, August. And uh, ACE has emphasized uh, to all of us what we can offer uh, in Qualimed uh, to assess uh, your lung function or your lung health for those who have already symptoms and who have already been diagnosed previously with lung problem. But uh, there are also a number of tests that we can do for those patients, young patients who are at risk, the obese patients, those patients who have uh, comorbidities that will... Uh, that may affect the lung function. So we have, as ACE uh, emphasized, uh, services uh, in the laboratory packages uh, for lung screening. We also have in our industrial and occupational health clinic, our, our weight management uh, program for those patients who are obese, who are suffering from uh, sleep uh, disorders or sleep apnea uh, and poor lung function. Uh, of course, we have uh, our pulmonary department, uh, our PFT, and our uh, other modalities to, to check your lung function. And we have a very good uh, set of subspecialists, our pulmonologists who are all here in Santa Rosa, who can do OPD consult as well as uh, assess you in patients. So thank you very much for this evening. And thank you very much for all the consultants as well as for our uh, all our employees who have uh, listened and uh, I hope you you also appreciated the way uh, August had approached the lecture. Back to you. 
Thank you po, Doktora. So that concludes our lecture for tonight. So abangan po natin yung ating ano, lecture for the next month, which will focus on neurologic diseases po. So thank you and see you for the, see you till our next webinar series. Thank you. Good night.